All right, guys, today we are gonna be talking about the Nissan. It's been quite some time, so let me show you what we're doing. For those of you who are new, this is a 1992 Nissan 300ZX. And this one's dual motor. So we got a motor in the front, as well as a motor in the back. So last time we talked about installing these motors, but today we're gonna to talk about the interior. So it's been way too long since we gave an update on the Nissan. So we're gonna take you back a little bit or when we're doing the interior. Yes, I am watching my own videos to see how to put things back together. All right, we are starting to put the interior back together. We've got uh, the dash bar back in. We've got the heater core AC, and this is the blower. So got all those in. Gonna continue to put the rest of the dash in. Um, I think we've got everything pretty much in here that we need. We do have to identify a few things like the AC button wire, the heater button wire, just so we can get those wired to their new places, their new switches. But yeah, we'll keep on working on this. We just have to make sure all the uh, connectors and things are coming out of the right holes. And kind of snap and fasten things back in place. This one feels close. Yes. This is the old heater core, and basically what it does on an internal combustion engine is it circulates uh, coolant or fluid from the engine, so which is hot, into this, and then basically the fan blows through here to and heat up the air. So we took that one out. I also put a, an electric heater core in. This is essentially the wires that come out of there. So we got two high voltage and then two low voltage wires. So that's in the heater core. The passenger side, we're just about done. I gotta put on the heater vent and then the uh, floorboard and I think the side's done. Got a lot more to do over there. All right, so putting things back together, I've got just a couple issues, not too bad. These are kind of the air vents and things that I'm trying to put back together. So these ones are here. The new accelerated pedal kind of gets in the way of where it was originally mounted. So I need to come up with a new mounting for that one. Also, this um, blinker relay was attached to the brake pedal bracket, which again is no longer there. So we need another place for that one. So those two need to get figured out. Um, I believe I've got most all of the wires um, figured out, which is great. These two white connectors, as well as these two black ones and that yellow one, they go on here. So there's the white one, white one on top. These are the two black. This is the one yellow. So all those are no longer going to be used. We do have to add a cable for the new display. So these plugs are okay, but these ones where they've got kind of exposed leads, I'm just gonna put some electrical tape because I just never know which ones are uh, live, you know, or that are grounded. We got uh, a piece from Send Cut Send that's going to join our gauge surround, gauge cluster, kind of to the OEM part. So now we've got kind of the mounting plate. It's all fastened. And that gives us essentially the same bolt hole locations as the original. So we can just mount it back in the car. On the back of this one, just got a couple things. So this is a GPS. It's like power and can. And then this one's a communication cable. All right, we're getting there. Um, my bracket 
along with this seems to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the hood or shroud on, make sure everything still lines up and works well. I'm just going to make sure I get these cables to the right place. Um, these ones are going to the little pods on the side. So I think we're looking good. I'm so excited to try it out. I forgot to uh, put this one on. By the time everything's done, I will have taken this apart like five times. It's looking pretty good, right? Well, we gotta take it all back apart. So there's two, the two wires down here, I'm pretty sure go to the heater core, which is in there. And it's, I think a plug on top. I'll see if I can plug it in, but more than likely I'm gonna have to take all this off. The dash has to come up, put those wires on and put everything back. The hard part is always just getting it done the first time. Uh, doing it again is goes much, much quicker. The other thing I want to do, are these are the wires that go from the display. So the display, I'll probably want to route those uh, through the dash as well. They'll go down here to the vehicle control unit. All right, with the help of Braden, we've got the uh, last two connectors figured out where they go, just kind of to that uh, center box there. And then we get to put everything back that we've taken out, which is a ton. All right, the interior is pretty much back together. So this side is like complete, done. I think this is pretty much complete and done. For today's sponsor, we have 3W, and these are some custom floor mats. All right, we got some nice big ones here. Man, that looks so nice. So this is all contoured, so it should have a perfect fit. It's like really high quality. And they've even got one kind of for the trunk area. So let me show you the vehicle that this is going in and we'll test the fit. All right, the floor mats are gonna go in this one. So you can see this is the original kind of OEM mats. I feel like the new ones are a little bit thicker, a little bit nicer. So we'll go ahead and take these out, put the new ones in. So there you can see the difference. Again, these are kind of a little thicker grooves, a little thicker material. Let's check the fit. There it is, fits like a glove. Looks really nice. Out with the old and in with the new. Great fit. And this one's got something for the middle seats here as well. Man, the fit on this is incredible. It looks very OEM. And last but not least, we got the trunk. And again, fits in the back just great. So these are all weather TPE floor mats. These feature snap-in secure fit because you don't want these things moving around. They have anti-slip studs. And if they ever get dirty, you can just take them right out, hose them off, put them right back in. Super easy to clean. They are heavy duty and durable. They are odorless and they are harmless. Same stuff they make, things like toothbrushes and pacifiers. And they are tailored made to each individual vehicle. I think this sort of thing is great for your vehicle. It upgrades it, it provides an extra layer of protection. And so if you're looking to upgrade yours, I'll leave a link in the video description below. As we we're putting the interior back together, the customer would like, I'll call it a digital kind of iPad type display here instead of the normal stereo. So what I was gonna do is I was just gonna actually cut this out and kind of 3D print a bezel, but what would be even better, and the customer suggested this, is make this whole thing a 3D printed part. So it actually looks very much OEM. So I'm gonna scan this one. I need to scan both front and back because I don't need just the front. I also need to know how it attaches to the car. So we're going to scan both sides and then we're going to reverse engineer this one. So we're actually going to make a model. 3D print uh, a prototype so we can try it out. The stereo console system was probably, it was even upgraded, but it was probably still like 20 years old. To finish up the Nissan interior, we've got this center console bezel. And this is, I'll call it a single DIN. This was kind of just a place to put papers or something, but the stereo was here. And the customer wanted, I'll call it a double DIN. There are companies that make a double DIN. So this is a double DIN from a company called Z-Spec, and it fits just perfectly, same as the original. However, the customer had some requests. So this one, it would sit back quite a ways and he wanted it flush. The other thing is we wanted to add a couple new features like parking sensors. And we also have some plugs and things from some of the new equipment we're installing like the dash that we wanna be able to access easily. We've got a new display kind of stereo system. So this will be the screen. So again, this is just kind of like like an iPad. So it's got a connector there. So this would be some of the cabling. It's got like brake, 
keyed. So again, all the uh, things like that. This will be for an antenna, I imagine. Looks like a GPS. So yeah, got lots of things here. And this is the, uh, the thing that'll fit in the car. And this will be the cable that runs to the display. So this was the original stereo, just a single DIN. So we've got some double DIN brackets and here is the new stereo unit. And this is the, essentially the display. It's interesting, I, I wonder why they didn't just like have it be attached. So they've got it like removable, but it, it does mount. So that's interesting. And it's also like a little bit at an angle. All right, we'll go put this in the car, see if we've got the uh, kind of right location for things. We're also gonna try out the 3D printed kind of bezel that I made. We'll see how that looks. All right, so this is, I'll call it the first attempt, and it's not bad, but you'll see that um, I think this is what the customer was wanting to get away from, where it's kind of sunken back and it kind of just, yeah. So I'll, I'll look at double down mounting bracket and see if I can kind of tilt that forward if that helps or what we need to do. Again, the face is detachable. So if we wanted to, we could modify this so it actually snaps into the bezel. Basically the top needs to go back, the bottom needs to go forward. So we'll see if there's enough adjustability that we can do that. All right, so I'm able to get the angle just about right, but I can't get the height right, meaning it's super tall, almost you know interfering with the uh, mounting points. So this needs to be dropped down a little bit. And as, for as much adjustability as these brackets have, it just, it's not gonna happen. So um, I'll design some brackets, uh, print them up, do a 3D print, uh, make sure we like where they're at, and then we'll order some from Send Cut Send. We're gonna do some 3D scanning first of the bezel I made, as well as uh, we'll take the bezel off and put the double DIN unit in and just kind of find out how far tilted, how far in or out it needs to go to kind of match this bezel. I am back in the car, still trying to work out the center console. Let me show you what I got it going on. So this is the uh, head unit or display that they wanted. It's touch screen and it works with a double DIN slot. I did have to make some new brackets, meaning we wanted it shifted down and then out towards the user to be flush. I'm on version six. I shouldn't admit that, but yeah, version six, the unit about as low as it can go. So I need the bezel opening to go up a little bit, tilted out just a little bit. So this needs to be tilted back. The bezel itself is just a little too wide. Top to bottom's good, but width needs to be adjusted. We're getting there, getting closer, but a couple more revisions. All right, using the trusty bubble level. So that says 38 and that says 33. So we need to adjust this one by five degrees. And then we've got about a 0.35 inch gap at the bottom that we need to change the opening in this bezel. So I modeled and 3D printed my own version. So it looks really good. I've got all the features um, front and back and this will be for the parking sensor. This will be for the plugs. All right, so we still need to put this in the car so you can see the flush mount of this screen. This is a parking sensor display. We'll wire these ones up to be able to program both like the VCU as well as the display. So this is just a test piece. We're gonna fit it in, make sure we like the fit and everything the way it looks, including the vents. If everything looks good, we'll print it out of a more robust material and polish it, make it look good. Again, for now, we'll just shove these cables, but eventually they would be connected to something useful. So I measured, we got five degrees. We're still missing uh, the cover plate here and I didn't put in the vents yet, but this is kind of what we're talking about. So it's uh, flush here. Um, it's got a good fit all around. I think right now it's just a little on the tight side, meaning it's it's like if I push it in one way, it's like really kind of pops out the other way. It's pretty tight. I might uh, just loosen it up just a touch, but this is looking really good. This is the uh, final version. I've got all the gaps and things kind of how I like it. So I think it looks really good. I just need the uh, one, I'll call it the little cover plate that goes over here that hides those screws. But other than that, I think it looks really sharp. All right, we've got the old wiring harness here. Um, we're just gonna swap it out, cut and splice wires for the new wiring harness. The 
this was the new plug, this was the old plug. So now we've got uh, this one that goes to the new unit and this one that goes to the car. So we've got them all spliced together. There's kind of a few ones that I just need to make sure with the customer, like there's a backup camera and some other inputs, just need to make sure what we're doing there. But uh, this should be good to go. I know it's been a long time, but I wanted to catch up. We have a few more backlog from the Nissan. So thanks for tuning in. See you next time.